Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today I'm gonna kind of recap some things in the past and in the future. So in the past, our Supra, which is behind us here, if you watched our recent video, we installed the Valenti taillights. We're actually still working on and testing those and we have to debunk the JDM versus USDM wiring. So that's a whole nother story. But our Supra was gone. I wanna kind of just get you up to speed and where it was. We had some issues with the cluster. The cluster itself was flashing in and out and just, you couldn't see the turn signals. You couldn't tell how much fuel was in the car. The problem was once it got to the dealership, they wouldn't really release the car because of safety concerns. And then on top of that, they didn't know how to order a cluster. They have to order the cluster from BMW, which becomes another issue. And then they have to set the miles so the car couldn't leave. So basically our car is back. We're gonna get going on it. We're gonna get building it. We're gonna be testing more exhaust. Uh, we're actually gonna be building it for the Supras in Vegas event, which is coming up in October. So we gotta do a whole build. So follow along while we do that to our manual transmission Supra. I also have some videos that I wanna do. We call these the 411 series, 411 series. And that's where I just take like two minutes and I talk about different products. And what's the difference when you see them on our website? What is this product versus this mirror cap? And as I think the next two are gonna be on carbon fiber mirror caps. And cause we have some that are ranging from 300 all the way down to sub hundred dollars and stuff. So what's the difference in these? And then another one on the 411 series, I'm gonna talk about wheel spacers and some of the different kinds uh, as well as hub rings and why you actually need these. So if you guys followed us along in today's video, we're actually gonna install the fourth brake light, which we've done a video on that. If you guys remember, we actually helped develop this product with the manufacturers overseas. And that's when we first learned that the taillights are wired differently in US versus Japan. So we're also gonna be installing these, which we designed and have a proprietary wiring schematic for these. Um, but these are super popular. We're actually thinking about adding the front ones. There's actually a really cool video that one of our customers did. I'll actually put a link up here. He did the rear and then he also did uh, a couple weeks before he ordered some front ones from Amazon and we can get those same things. The problem is, is the whole front of the car is wired CAN bus. So it's really hard to actually get power and things like that from the front. So today we're gonna be installing carbon fiber rear diffuser, installing these LED lights, fourth brake light, uh, putting the bumper actually back on the car with the carbon diffuser uh, that we've had since day one on our original, original Supra, so three Supras ago. And we're gonna be installing the HKS Super Dragger exhaust, so make sure you stay tuned for a future video with all the sound clips. So today, let's just get some work done. All right guys, so Caleb's gonna bang out this exhaust really quick. Uh, we are using the stock downpipe with this car. This is the HKS Super Turbo Muffler um, so this is not the high power, which we sell actually quite a few of. This is the standard in Japan. So the, this is a two box system. This is super, super heavy. So HKS actually sent the, this system to us to kind of a, reintroduce it to the community in the US. So someone who doesn't really want a really obnoxious system, this is probably gonna be the system for you. I actually probably am gonna really like this. Uh, I would say with um, opening up the downpipe or anything like that, it's gonna be perfect sounding. It's not gonna be over intense or anything like that. So this is, I'm really excited to check this out. And again, this is the standard in Japan. Uh, they actually told us like some of the, the counts, like how many they actually sell. So what HKS was actually telling me is they actually produce and sell more of this system everywhere else in the world except for the USA. Again, this is going to be a standard two box. They're very expensive to ship. We do offer free shipping on our website, so you don't have to worry about that. Let's take a look at it. So this is going to be the part that matches up to the actual down, the factory downpipe. I mean, check out the quality of that. I mean, look at this, this is awesome. So then this is two other sections here. So these are just your standard parts on the way back. So the second part and why these are shipped in two boxes is the rear section is all one piece. So let's open that one up. So this is the rear section and it's gonna be a one piece kind of like set up. There's a couple other systems on the market like this, but they do require a larger box, but we find that these systems actually fit the best. Let's shut these off to the side. There she is. So again, this is a, 
an interesting concept. Um, you still have a valve, which is really cool. You have both systems going in through the muffler here. So they both come in and then they circle inside here and they both come out the tips itself. Really large muffler. The cool thing with this is you actually get a serial number on here and that has to do with the, it's like the carb of Japan, you know? So if any of you guys actually know, I thought this was actually gonna say JASMA approved. If you guys, any of you guys know what JARI stands for, I mean, we can do a quick Google, but that has to do, I believe, with the Japanese like carb and noise emissions and stuff like that. Look at the quality of this though. Super, super cool. So let's get to it and let's get this on and get the rear bumper and go from there. See guys, these aren't no cheap clamps. I mean, this is pretty cool. The system comes with four of these and it comes with a special clamp for the front at the downpipe itself. High quality stuff here. All right guys, we're almost finished wrapping up the install. Um, this is really straightforward. It uses the same clamps as the high power. So you got clamps here and you got the two up front and then you got the standard uh, clamp for the downpipe itself. Uh, but I really like these double, this, it's a double rolled walled tip versus the high power which is like a straight tip. Uh, actually has all these vents inside here as well as on the back side. So a quick comment on the valve. It actually has its own spring built in to the valve itself. Uh, so everything just kind of transferred over really super easily. So you're just gonna plug this in when we're done. Uh, one thing I wanted to kind of talk about, so on the super turbo muffler, which is what I told you guys it was earlier, um, it is uh, right here, that tag. We actually looked it up and Googled it. So Japanese automobile, which was something we don't actually say too much. So Japanese Automotive Automobile Research Institute, and it is at 89 decibels. So this is very similar to like an emissions type thing. It's a sound decibel thing for, the, for Japan. So, so far I really like this thing. I don't expect it to be super loud, like I said. Uh, it's gonna be nice and tame sounding. But again, I'm telling you what the guys direct from Japan told us when they visited, this is one of the number one selling SKUs over the high power uh, all across the world, minus USA. So I kinda wanted to just shed some light on this. We'll get you guys some sound clips in just a second. So guys, this is uh, just a little bit of JDM stuff here. Pretty authentic looking piece of paper with the actual part number on there. You get this pretty cool sticker for the super turbo muffler. And then inside here, it just kind of goes over the instructions as you can see and how to do the insulation, how to torque everything. And in here, this one's the important part. This one talks about that tag I'm gonna show you in a second. This is the JIRA, so it's the Japanese Automotive Research Institute or Automobile. And it talks about how this is 89 decibels, recommended for streets in Japan and all that stuff. So you can just take a look at that here and just uh, read that. Okay, so this, like I said to you in the earlier in the video, this is from our original, original car. So we had a little bit of dust on it, but this thing's gonna look really sick once it's up there. As you can see, we've already installed our fourth brake light. So now we gotta get to installing these pieces. We've already removed the inner piece from uh, the light itself. Uh, so now we're just gonna get those taped in there and do all the wiring up in here. And then we're gonna mount the bumper back on and we'll be good for the day. There's a previous video on this, but we're going in. These are the lights that go into the tail light itself. It's much easier with the bumper off. So one of these is a ground, and then the other one's a parking light, and then the other one is the brake and turn signal. So we're gonna tap into these wires here and make some connections. So we're gonna tap into this one right here, which is gonna be the blue with the green. This is gonna be our hazard slash turn signal. And it's also our brake wire, we already just know that. And then this one's constant, so this is just the parking light or running light. All their wires over here, a little, I mean a little bit different actually. So let me just get some extra wire here. So I'm just gonna open this up a little bit just by doing that. I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. Take this, open it a little bit here, do a little bit here. And I'll show you guys how I make my connections real quick here. So what I actually do is I cut it with a razor blade. So that little cut that I did, I just come in here and I cut that little section very minutely. And then I actually open it up. I'm gonna twist these wires together. I don't like using the T-taps personally, even though the kit comes that way. Um, even the customer's video that I linked earlier, he ended up soldering them because I think he had a loose connection. Um, you just gotta be careful how you solder, so. So I just peel that back. And I have the wire exposed. Now what I actually do is I actually put a hole through it like this. So I know this is the turn signal. And then right through the middle of it, Kind of just poke a hole through it. 
just like that. And I'm gonna feed my wires through there and actually wrap them around. All right guys, so here's the end result. So we have our carbon diffuser on, we have the F1 brake light, we have the Valenti tail lights, we have the HKS tips, and we have the side, uh, these are our side marker reflectors that light up. So let's go over some of the functions. Let's move over here. All right, so let's turn the parking lights on. So you're gonna get a bar here, you're gonna get a red bar here, and you get a, a center brake. So that's how the back end's gonna look. And then if you do the brakes, Everything's gonna break. Those are gonna drop down really hard and the center is gonna lighten up in the center there. And if we do it, like put the car in reverse uh, without the brake, so now you're backing up. But if you hit the brake, these side markers will actually trump it and, and turn on. So if you're braking while you're reversing, it'll actually show you that you're braking still, which is pretty super cool. So brake again. And if we wanna do the hazards, this is what it'll look like. So as a blinker or the hazard, this is what it'll look like on the left or right side. So again, if you guys watched our other video on the Valenti taillights, there is another way to wire these, but we're gonna get into that next week. Uh, we just wanted to kind of like put the back end of our car back together to do our first step on modifying our car uh, to get it ready for Supers in Vegas. So thanks a lot. See you guys on the next video.